Hi, and welcome back to this month's Security Month in Review. My name is Jack Smallpage, and I'm the Information Security Officer here at Chess. The world of security is always moving and evolving, with vulnerabilities, breaches, and new guidance being released every day. The sheer volume and complexity of some of these can sometimes be overwhelming and difficult to keep track of. So, in this article series, I hope to summarise some of this month's highlights so together we can be more cyber aware. The NCSC, CISA and other security professionals have warned organisations of the ongoing ESXi ARGS ransomware campaign this month, as VMware ESXi devices worldwide have been increasingly hit with an estimated 3,800 servers compromised so far. One key flaw being used in this attack is CVE 2021-21974, which allows an unauthenticated attacker to exploit an open SLP flaw to gain remote code execution and deploy the ESXi ARGS ransomware. Whilst recovery scripts have been made available by CISA and others, newer attacks are reportedly evolving and making recovery much harder, if not impossible. The patch for 21974 has been available since February last year, but it is very likely that attackers are using any vulnerability accessible to deploy the ransomware, so it's strongly recommended that you 1. Update servers to the latest version of VMware ESXi software, 2. Harden ESXi hypervisors by disabling the SLP service, and three, ensure that the ESXi hypervisor is not exposed to the public internet. Links to the advisories and the recovery scripts can be found in the article. Cisco has rolled out security updates to address a critical remote code execution vulnerability in ClamAV this month too. ClamAV is an open source antivirus engine which is known for its cross-platform capability, such as with Linux. And the vulnerability in question is being tracked as CVE 2023 20032 with a CVSS score of 9.8. Successful exploitation of the vulnerability could allow an attacker to execute remote code as the ClamAV platform, which depending on associated privileges could involve them allowing the installation of programs, creation of new accounts with full user rights, and the ability to view, change, or even delete data. The patch versions and details can be found in the article below. Moving on to iOS and macOS, Apple have released an emergency update for their first zero day this year. The vulnerability is tracked as CVE 2023-23529 and is a WebKit confusion issue which can trigger OS crashes and enable attackers to execute arbitrary code on compromised devices after opening a malicious page. Apple and CISA have also noted that the issue may have been actively exploited in the wild, increasing the importance for timely patching. The flaw affects a wide variety of Apple OS, including various iOS, macOS, iPadOS, Safari, tvOS and watchOS. The patch versions have been listed below to help you quickly confirm your impact. Keeping on theme with zero days, Fortress disclosed a warning about an actively exploited zero day vulnerability affecting on-premise instances of its Go Anywhere MFT, or Managed File Transfer solution, on the 1st of this month. The notification was published on the customer portal, however, which does require a free account to access, but details the exploit requiring access to the admin console of the application, which in most cases is accessible only from within a private company network, through a VPN or an allow listed IP address, as is security best practice. However, in instances where the admin console is exposed to the internet, the attacker can easily access the console, leverage the remote code injection exploit and access potentially sensitive information. Businesses using Go Anywhere MFT should check instances if you haven't done so already and make sure that they're not internet exposed. If instances are exposed, you should access your Go Anywhere account for further detail and indicators of compromise, which includes a specific stack trace which shows up in the logs of compromised systems. Once the impact has been ascertained, all users should make sure to apply the emergency patch 7.1.2 to secure the vulnerability as soon as possible. The well-known and widely used encryption library OpenSSL has released security updates this month too, covering its two current versions as well as the legacy 1.0.2 version, which is only patchable via it paid, extended or premium support. The update has fixed eight CVEs in total, with one, 0286, being a high severity address type confusion flaw. If you are still using the legacy 1.0.2 version, now might be the perfect time to review your processes and update to a more recent and free version. To make sure you're protected from the vulnerabilities identified, make sure you are also on one of the versions detailed in the article, with an additional link to Sophos explaining some useful explanation and detail.
And finally, QNAP took to warning its customers to install QTS and QUTS firmware updates at the end of last month to fix a critical vulnerability allowing attackers to remotely inject malicious code on QNAP NAS devices. The SQL injection vulnerability has been assigned a CVE 2022-27596 with a CVSS score of 9.8 due to its low complexity, unauthenticated nature requiring no user interaction. The floor is reported to affect QNAP devices running QTS 5.0.1 and QUTS Hero H5.0.1. Admin should check their networks for impact and update applicable instances to one of the listed versions as detailed in the final segment. As always, this article doesn't contain everything as it's been a busy time of year, but I hope this gives you enough insight to understand the events which you have perhaps already heard and prompt you on the ones you perhaps haven't. If you have any worries or questions, please feel free to get in touch with either myself or anyone else here at the Chess family, and we'll be sure to help you and your security posture. I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to another review next month.